kinda towards we're moving well into negligence now. We're starting to talk about the standards of care, meaning how how do you determine what standard people should be held to to determine whether or not they are negligent? And we are focusing on initially in a, today in the next couple of episodes, maybe just tomorrow. Uh, we're going to focus on the reasonably prudent person standard of care. And we have three cases that we focused on in class today. We focused on Vin, Vaughn v. Menlove, talked about Delaire v. McAdoo, and Trimarco v. Klein. And I won't go into the facts. I'll just give a little clip of what I learned from it. Um, Vaughn was about a hayrick. And what happened here is the person was a little dumb, uh, but... We're not going to use a subjective standard to account for their unwise decision, so to speak. Instead, we're going to focus on an objective standard uh, as seen by a reasonably prudent person, and we're not going to use the subjective standard. And the reason for doing so is because if we hold people to the subjective standard, which you could see in this case as a lesser standard, only in this case, though, specifically, because the person was not as smart as the reasonably average, uh, a reasonably prudent person. So if we hold this person to a subjective lower standard, it's going to end up being too dangerous, because then you're going to have people who are doing dangerous things, who are dumb in what they're doing. I'm not saying that they're dumb as a person, but what they're doing is dumb. They may not know any better. But they need to be held to a higher standard or else we're going to have costs that go out the window. So that's Yvonne V. Menlove. Next case is Delaire. And right here is a, it's a case about a worn tire that ended up exploding. The car swerved into another person. And we're looking at whether or not we should hold somebody accountable for instances when a reasonable person would not know that those circumstances were dangerous. Like, for example, if you pull over onto the side of the road and you're looking underneath your hood and you don't know what you're looking at, I mean, tires are pretty obvious, but imagine looking at other things underneath the hood. You don't know what's wrong. So what are you going to do if the average person doesn't know? Do we hold them to a higher standard? Is the reasonable person supposed to have this higher standard? What we're going to say is that we still need to follow a minimal standard of care because the weight of dangerous circumstances need to be taken into account. This goes into what we talked about yesterday with doing this risk-benefit analysis. So we're going to take into account this weight of dangerous circumstances. But what are we going to do if a person knows more than the reasonable standard? Someone who has superior knowledge. So in this case, a mechanic. A mechanic knows that something's wrong with the car, but decides to drive on it anyways. Do we hold them to a higher standard of standard of care? Well, the, there's a whole lot of questions about this. Some courts say yes, and the restatement of torts, the second and the third, say yes, but other courts say no. Even people who have several years of experience may not need to be held liable to this higher standard of care. Meaning, they could, in essence, probably get away with some things. But that's some courts. Okay, so now we have Tremarco and V. Klein. And this is about a door, a shower door, that the person opened and it shattered. And the door was not supposed to be glass. At least the plaintiff in this situation didn't know that it was supposed to be glass. But how do we determine an objective standard? Well, this case is a great example because both parties look towards the customs of when you're supposed to change this glass door. So when one way to determine the objective standard is through these customs. Both the plaintiffs and the defendants can provide evidence uh, that says, here's what the custom is. The plaintiffs are going to say, the defendant should follow this custom. And the defendants are going to say, we follow that custom to a T, and here's customs that we're supposed to follow. And the testimony of experts are going to dis- persuade the jury one way or the other what the custom is supposed to be. In other words, the custom is what the reasonably prudent person is supposed to examine.
Uh, there's a couple of rules with customs, though. If people do not know the custom, say a complete stranger to a community, walks into a community, and that community has customs, the person needs to follow the customs. The community doesn't conform to the person. The person conforms to the community, in other words. Additionally, a custom is not a definite standard of law, meaning the jury can look at those things, make applications, analysis as far as for what a reasonably prudent person is, but if, like, for example, a custom conflicts with the statute, they can look at the customs, they can make examples from customs, but the rule of law is ultimately going to stand more firm than the custom is itself. We're going to keep talking about a couple more cases tomorrow, but that is our introduction to the reasonably prudent person. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Law Schoolers. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to say. The first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website, I would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro. And you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't are pre-law materials. And the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice. And with that, the fourth thing is if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.